missing out. You know, when, when I get to get through like this, mm -hmm. it's lagging a bit, but once it starts to get to like, I think then it's 3000 RPM, yeah. it's starting to give it's a kick. Up, like, yeah. I think it's around 2.5. Yeah. Sound, it doesn't sound like it's enhanced from outside because eh? mm. usually like they're enhancing it through the speakers yeah but this, this sounds like it's natural you see on gear one at least it's it goes it goes immediately mm. but usually when i drive manual i drive got two yeah. so you can feel that it's it's like it's uh, lacking but one from the kicks start. like around 2.5 that's when it goes that's it. So that's the call for me to then just give you my considerations before we can get back to the dealership. 
so from this little drive okay before i say much this clash it gets me all the time i've driven so many hyundai's like even the previous versions they've been giving me a problem i think if i find a steep hill i will panic because the clash is too close like just be aware of that whenever you're driving a hyundai so but yeah enough about that um basically just going to be looking at uh, the closest competition for this car looking at the sales figures i think then it's fair to say the polo and the fiesta are the ones that are really close in terms of competition i know there are other brands and cars out there that obviously are competing but i'm basing it on those two basically so the variants that are competing with this one from the others are the highline polo and the titanium fiesta which the polo comes with 85 kilowatts and 200 newton meters of torque and the fiesta comes with 92 kilowatts and 170 newton meters so uh this one is slotting just between those two because it's at like 89.5 uh kilowatts and then it's sitting at 171.6 i keep thinking about these numbers and i'm wondering why do we have to keep the points in these numbers but then okay you know what polo is everyone's favorite that's for sure and it has a very smooth engine that is shared with the a3 audi a3 and then when you think about the fiesta as well i think for me the fiesta i've been driving a fiesta for quite some time and the new one as well it's one of the smoothest drive you can find in the market when it comes to these small hatchbacks so then now when you look at these two you're asking yourself then now does this car really stand the chance against those but looking at the numbers it's not like it hasn't been having a leg to stand on because it's been selling in numbers i've seen one article i think i haven't verified the numbers but they said they sold more than 100,000 i20s ever since it started coming to the country so looking at this though it has always been a like a sensible kind of option for someone like who wants to buy a i20 as much as they were like uh what is this uh sport variants that they did with the n line and i think there was a sport as well it was not always selling because it's it's sporty vehicle people were buying it because it's a sensible vehicle and i understand why they were doing that but now looking at the design and obviously the way they discard the way it's designed and the way they're trying to present it they're presenting it for that sporty feeling so now does it stand a chance to be sold as a sporty vehicle looking at the competition compared to the polo in the fiesta you get quite a rough drive and rough feel when you're driving it which is good because it's a sporty one the engine sound as well sounds a little bit rough like a little bit of a diesel but in an interesting way it's not too much so i think for me it's it's starting to win a bit in that sense it's also not the most comfortable or the most quiet car you're going to find out there which is informing the sporty feeling that i'm talking about the one liter as well in this it's blowing because i didn't expect it to be like this it's punchy and it can help you in those overtake moments and if you think about it it's not everyone who can say this but when you're at the traffic light sometimes you're just seeing like your competitor on the side and you're like i want to leave a bit of dust from this one so i think you're going to have fun in that as much as the numbers are saying the polo will dust you but depending on how you drive of course you can at least win that battle of getting to 60 kilometers just with ease so now this i think for real it's like hyundai's answer to getting into that spot you know sporty thing and people are more curious now because you know hyundai is starting to like rock the world with their end visions and with the i30n and the n lines that are coming in it's it's starting to show that they are starting to be a challenger in that space so for me i'd be asking myself there is there anywhere where this particular one can win over competitors i'm thinking currently looking at the looks it's a great looking car those cars haven't been refreshed in quite some time there's a new polo coming though we'll see when it comes because we're already used to the current polo anyway and then the rough engine sounds that it gives it, it's so engaging that it feels so sporty for you and then the feeling to the hands of oh, this steering wheel is nice this the steering wheel is nice and then another thing that i can think of actually is the layout of the dash as well i find it to be very nice it has this sporty thing that is happening inside the dash 
as well the seven year warranty Hyundai always wins when it comes to that this warranty is making people to feel so comfortable in buying the Hyundai basically but overall what I think it's not far off from the competition it's a great car it's great for consideration and i really think brand preference is going to play a very big role in this segment if you think about it at the end of the day the service that you get before and after you purchase the car will inform a lot in terms of which brand are you going with as i said before in one of my videos when i was reviewing the kia sonnet that cars are more or less like offering the same things you're going to find the same features then what else is there it's definitely going to be how you are treated before you buy the car and after you buy the car at least that's what i believe but putting everything aside this is a solid product and if you're looking for a daily driver that you're gonna have fun with and just enjoy driving each and every day this car is really worth looking into you need to really consider this one with that said i truly appreciate that you've watched thank you very much i'm out